Well, today I want to talk another about another viewer request. Can you please put a face mask, a cotton face mask under the microscope? Well, of course I can't do that, but I have to tell you right away, I discovered something quite interesting here, something that hmm, caused me a little bit to worry, uh, namely that, that it's not made of cotton. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I actually found that out. And one way how I found it out is, is because I've seen those patterns, those regular patterns where the different layers of the cotton were fused together and uh, in order to really check whether it's made of cotton or some artificial yeah, fibers I used the so-called needle test it's quite easy all you have to do is you have to heat up a needle over a candle and then when the when it's cotton then the cotton will start uh, to char and it becomes black but when it's an artificial fiber like in this case um, it actually starts uh, to melt of course I forgot to say hello and welcome again <laughs> microbe hunter here today no microbe hunting um, but as a matter of fact, I would like uh, to have a look at those synthetic fibers um, of um, a face mask. Under the stereo microscope, uh, you can actually see that the ends of the fibers, they started to melt and you can see those uh, circular little buds. So it really looks uh, like that it has actually has molten. And I'm a little bit worried about that because this actually means that these face masks are not biodegradable. So this means you cannot simply throw them away uh, in nature. You shouldn't be doing this anyway, but you have to properly uh, dispose them. So what I've done next is, is um, I dissected the face mask. Uh, I cut it apart a little bit because I wanted to put one of the three layers um, of the face mask and I just wanted to put it under the microscope, under my compound microscope that is, um, to see how the fibers actually look like. And I did not use any mounting medium, I just made a dry mount, uh, simply the, yeah, the cotton, which is actually not cotton, some kind of synthetic fiber, uh, and then a directly a cover glass on top. And this is what I saw. Um, this is, by the way, this is low magnification with, uh, using the four times objective. And I immediately saw something that I did not really expect. And very regular intervals, I saw those patches, those round patches, and these are places where the fibers were actually fused together. So I suppose, uh, I'm almost sure about that, that they were actually fused together using heat so that the individual fibers do not separate. And this was a very, in a very regular pattern. I could see this quite well um, under the microscope, which is again and yet another indicator that we're not talking about uh, cotton, which is cellulose, but some kind of a synthetic material. In other words, those uh, face masks are actually made of plastic. Um, it's quite uh, interesting to see this um, and it also kind of shows that the fibers um, yeah, are actually packed relatively loosely um, but still evidently enough uh, to catch uh, the droplets um, yeah, that are emitted uh, when people talk. Uh, so those droplets of course they get caught in there. So this is uh, the first thing that I essentially observed. So those patches um, were or, or arranged in a very very regular pattern. So it actually means that uh, evidently a machine has of course uh, pressed those fibers together. So I tried to now add a little bit of ink uh, simply because I wanted to see if these fibers actually also stain. It's a water-based ink and I immediately realized uh, something yeah, quite interesting namely that that uh, the fibers really did not like to absorb the ink. They did not like to take it up. So essentially what happened is, is that the ink kind of uh, yeah, moved around uh, the, 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 the tissue but it actually did not really go into the tissue. Um, so this is actually something that uh, can is actually quite expected when you're dealing with synthetic fibers because synthetic fibers are um, hydrophobic and uh, of course the water-based ink is hydrophilic so they don't really yeah, uh, mix together quite well. Here you can see actually how the ink is moving forward and then when it touches the fibers, um, I normally would have expected in the case of cotton, that is, that it's immediately sucked into um, yeah, the fibers uh, due to capillary action, but this did not happen here. So the ink um, with the water essentially tended to stay on the side a little bit and it did not want to move in further. Um, yeah, because um, evidently the fibers must have been hydrophobic and therefore did not like to interact um, very much uh, with uh, the water water-based ink. So this is yet another indicator of course that we're not dealing with natural fibers here um, which cotton fibers are quite hydrophilic as we all know uh, but some kind of a synthetic material. I, unfortunately I don't know which uh, material we're talking about here. Here's the control. Now on the left side I put uh, some regular tissue paper and look how the ink and the tissue paper interact. On the right side this is what I just have done before but now look at the ink um, and the tissue paper on the left side. As soon as the ink touches the tissue paper um, it's immediately sucked into the tissue paper quite quickly. And as a matter of fact uh, tissue paper with 
cellulose and cotton is, uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, so you see that uh, the response uh, to water is quite different. So I said, okay, if I want to observe those uh, synthetic fibers, um, I have to use an appropriate mounting medium, also hydrophobic mounting medium, and I used Uperol, it's one of my favorite mounting media. And of course, uh, it was absolutely no problem uh, to mix the Uperol with the synthetic fibers. Um, and I was able to make a permanent mount this way. I say almost jokingly, you know, for future memory of Corona times, the slide will now be preserved for the next 100 years. Because um, if uh, the slide is properly made, those permanent slides can last a very, very long time. And so you have to simply rotate the cover glass a little bit into the right direction. And then, um, yeah, um, I put it under the microscope again, and I was able to see again at low magnification, I was able to see again those patches, some occasional air bubbles, which I did not quite uh, easily removed but you might also notice now that the fibers look a little bit brighter the reason is, is because the refractive index between the fibers and the surrounding mounting media are more similar and this uh, allows more light uh, to actually go through well and as I show you the fibers at different uh, magnifications um, I would uh, like uh, to do a little bit of advertisement in my own cause I have an Amazon affiliate web shop this means that I've collected products there microscopy related products um, uh, that can be bought over Amazon Amazon and uh, when you buy a product there then um, I will earn a small commission and this essentially also helps uh, to support uh, this channel and if you're also um, interested in supporting the channel by becoming a patron I of course would also like you to invite you to do that and of course I want to say a very big thank you to all of my patron supporters and another thing that I would like uh, to mention is, is that we also have uh, of course a second YouTube channel this YouTube channel is more uh, related to observation but my second YouTube channel um, is based uh, more on theory. So I talk a little bit about microscopes um, and uh, microscope hardware. Um, and uh, I also answer some, uh, some viewers questions there. Now this what you see here is, is uh, this is actually now the face mask uh, that I actually did manage to stain with a little bit of uh, ink and you can see quite nicely that those patches where the fibers are fused together these are now white spots in a very regular pattern and uh, of course um, also in dark field and also in oblique illumination and so on um, this also gives us some very interesting um, yeah, views um, of this face mask who would have thought that a face mask like this is actually um, also quite interesting to look at. Um, in any case I would like to now thank you for uh, having watched this video of course and I would also like to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Um, it's, uh, yeah, microscopy as a hobby is a very fascinating um, and interesting hobby I think and I hope that I'm also able to motivate you a little bit to put things under the microscope. If you don't have a microscope yet, of course, uh, then I would like to invite you again over to the other channel where I'm going to give you also some microscope buying advice. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye-bye.